Hi, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining me again today. I'm going to be continuing on with my experiment with jelly printing without the jelly plate. Um, if you've been following my blog, then you'll be aware that I did try to make my own homemade jelly plate with disastrous results. Um, and in the end, I ended up using a glass cutting mat or a glass chopping board like this one here, but I'll show you that in a moment with some decent results. So today I want to continue on with my experimentation, but using something different. I'm going to be using a silicon mat. Okay, so let's get playing. So this is the glass cutting mat that you can pick up in most, um, well, most home stores, really. I got mine from a local supermarket for uh, less than five pounds, um, which is the equivalent to less than about eight dollars. Um, and this, being glass, um, did come up with some really interesting results. So let me just quickly show you what I created just on this glass cutting mat. So I created just a few sheets here and I also created the background for um, this art journal page that you can see here. And again, the video for the process of this one is on YouTube and on my blog too. So this background or under paper you can see here was created in the same process as these on this glass cutting mat. So, but I'm, so we know that the glass cutting mat does work to some extent. Okay, so today, instead of using the glass cutting mat, I'm going to use this. Okay, so this is a silicone sheet. Now this is meant for home baking. And I've got another one here in blue. So there you go, proof in the pudding, baking mat. And it's approximately 10 and 3 quarters by 14 inches along. So in metric, that's 27 centimeters by 36 centimeters. So 10 and three quarters by 14 inches that way. So it's a decent size. So it's actually bigger than one of the jelly plates that you can buy. I think one of the sizes of the jelly plate is eight by 10. So you can get an eight by eight and an eight by 10, which I think it's quite expensive uh, for what it is. But this is what these experiments are all about. Do I actually need to buy a jelly plate to get exactly the same results. I've got my glass mat, I know that works, but what about something else? Now this cost me, oh, um, I got two for about eight pounds, which is about $10. You know, it's not that much at all. So again, this is one of those things that you can just wash off, roll up, and then put back in your craft stash. Now let me just put that to one side. So, does it work? Well, let's have a play, shall we? So I have two different types of paper here with me today. I have just standard printer paper, uh, which I've just stolen out of my laser printer. And then I have some thicker white cardstock here. Now this is about 200 GSM cardstock, which works out to be somewhere in the region of about 180 pound in American weight, I think. If I'm wrong about that, I will just pop a note here. Um, so I'm gonna try using both of those today. Okay, so I have a selection of different paints that I'm gonna be using. So I have some very, very inexpensive um, Ducraft Artiste acrylic paints here. Now these are very, very inexpensive paints. I mean, literally about, about a pound a bottle for these ones um, and I have a little bit more um, expensive ones. These are the Indigo Blue um, English Cottage Artist Acrylic Paint, which I use a lot. I love these paints. Um, and they come in all sorts of you know, beautiful colours, plus metallics, uh, and, and also some matte ones too. Uh, it was a really good selection of um, different colours that you can use. So I'm going to be using these today. I'm just going to be pulling them out at random because this is just an experiment. I'm not trying to create anything earth shattering. I'm not trying to create anything specific. I just want to see whether or not I can get some good background results. Now I'll probably use these more than the um, indigo blue ones mainly because the indigo blue ones are in pots. These have got little handy pourers on them so I shall probably use these more. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add some bits to my jelly plate and we'll get started. So I'm going to add just random dots. I'm not going to put too much on and we'll see what results we get from that. And I think previously when I've done this, uh, I've actually put too much paint on, because I'm new to jelly printing, I'm new to mono printing, I should say. Um, I've never really done anything um, remotely like this. So this is why I'm experimenting with, do I actually need to go out and buy um, a jelly plate? Because if I don't need to, then I don't need to go and spend that money, I can spend it on something else. Um, so just using a brayer, uh, this is a speedball brayer, and I do have some um, kitchen towel just here so I can clean off my brayer. I'm not going to be washing down the silicone mat every time I want to do a print, I'm just going to go over and over and over. So I'm just going to randomly roll that. And then clean off and then we'll start with our first print and see what happens. Now I may not have put enough paint on or I may have put too much on, I don't know. This is the joy of experimentation isn't it? It's a learning process for everybody. And it's just like you're along for the ride. Okay, let's pull the first one off and see what happens. Okay. No, I don't think that's too bad. I shall lay that to one side to dry. And then let's add some different colours. Let's go a bit darker. And then this time we'll do some mat making in it. So add some red, add some yellow, like I said, I'm not going mad with the colour. And then let's add some really, really deep blue. Bahama blue, how's that? Let me just get the pen down to the top of the lid. Yeah, I think that'll do, seeing it's a dark color. And this time, let's go up and down. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm grabbing a pencil and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do some lines in it. And let's see whether these transfer. I'm just clean the nib of that pencil off. Let's use the card. I'm just going to drop that down and give it a push. Don't want to push too hard. I don't want those wavy lines to be pushed out. So I'll just give that a little bit of a gentle rub down. Okay, are we ready? Looking good so far. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to one side. And let's try some even darker colours now. Let's go for chocolate brown. Okay, and then let's add in some gold. This is metallic gold, so let's just have some big splodges of that. 
and then let's see what that does for us. Now I'm just lightly running the brayer. I'm not pushing hard down, just lightly. Okay, and again, let's do some circles in this. I think temptation is to write in it as well, but you've got to remember that if you do write in it, you have to write backwards. Yeah, that'll do. the sheet of the card and just gently press down and then off it comes. Ah, now you can see the sheen coming through there. And it's also transferred some of that blue and the red as well. I've got a lump. Eh, never mind. We are experimenting after all. Ooh. So, yep, the gold sheen is coming through there as well. So you can see that. Cool, so we'll place that to one side. Now then, I wonder what would happen if we used a stamp. So let's go back to our, what I call summary colors, and add on some dobs of the blue. And this time, I'm going to add in the yellow. Okay, and I'm going to add some white. Just a couple of splodges of white. Okay, so for this, I'm going to also bring in a sunflower stamp from Indigo Blue. So there you go. I've not cut it out, which I suppose I should have done actually. I'm just going to pause this then. I will go and cut this out and then I'll be right back. So I'm back. Okay, I've cut out a stamp. And we're just going to roll a... I think we'll go up and down again. I'm loving this sort of overly blobby kind of pattern that we're getting. Let's go back over that one. Okay, so I'm going to take the stamp and I'm just going to drop it down and push it into the paint. And then just really gently peel it off again. Drop it in. Sorry if my head got in the way there. And then off. Look at that. Just stamp that down. <sighs> Fabulous. A lovely stamp, isn't it? Okay, so again, drop that in. And peel it off. And then we'll just stamp off again over here. Lovely sort of ombre effect, isn't it? Now, I want to just try and speed up a little bit on this one because I'm conscious that the paint may start to dry. I'll just drop that one in there. Not wishing to waste the paint. And then once more in that corner. 
think. And peel. Stamp off. And I think just again, just there. get rid of the paint for a sec. Right now, the thing with using a stamp with acrylic paint is that you need to drop it into water straight away because if the acrylic paint dries on the stamp, your stamp's ruined. So you must have um, a bowl with some water in, that way you're working, just to drop it into. Now you don't have to wash it, as long as you drop it in the water, you can go back and wash it later. Okay, so, let's use the card again, and I'm just going to drop that straight down, and give it a light push. There we go. And then let's do the big reveal. All right, it has brought some of the pattern out. As you can see there, it's not 100% brilliant, but I think that's probably down to the pressure that I'm applying when I'm pushing the back of the card or the paper. We'll do one more. And this time I'm going to use a butterfly stamp, but just as an aside, Stamping with acrylic paint. That's another another video. So, so for this one, let's go green. Big blobs of green. Add some of that white in. Ooh. Big dollops. I think that'll do. I think that's going to be it. So let's go across. Mix in some of that paint. Okay. I'm just clean off my brayer. I'll just flip that over. Okay, it's got most of that off. Okay, so, butterfly stamp. Again, this is an indigo blue stamp. And deeply etched, so let's just drop that in there. And then pull it off. Mm. There is a little bit of movement on the paint. You can feel it when you push down. But we're only trying to get hints. Not massive. I'm not trying to get perfect impressions. I just want hints of the butterfly shape coming through. Because I think that it is straight into the, actually, just push that down so you can see. Yeah. Okay, straight into the water. And again, use a sheet of the card and I'm just going to drop that over the top like so. And then just very, very, very gently just run my fingers over the top. Mm, hardly putting any pressure at all on the back of that one. And it doesn't matter that I'm pulling paint out from the corners because obviously this is the back. So just very, 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 very gently. Okay. 
Let's peel that off and see what we got. Well, that's not too bad, is it? That's quite sweet, in fact. Cool, right, let's drop that down for drying. And just with the last remaining bits on there, I'm just going to randomly now throw colour on. And let's add in some red. And let's throw in some blackberry purple. And let's see what else we've got, a little bit of yellow. Random squidges. Okay. And we'll go up and down. And I'm leaving it like that. I am so leaving it like that. Okay. So for this one, I'm just going to do random little squiggles. Up and down, horizontal and vertical, wherever I fancy a little space. Okay. And the last print, I think. Drop it down, give it a little push. Just lightly. Okay. And then off it comes. <laughs> A riot of colour. There you go. Well, who knew? There you go. Something as inexpensive as a baking mat that you can pick up from most cook or bakeware stores does the job quite adequately. There you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed playing along and experimenting along with me. Uh, it's always a scary process when you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but if you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up so YouTube know that you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so by clicking the button at the end. Okay, that's all for me for today. And I hope you'll join me again real soon. Thanks for watching.